I'd like to talk about the scriptures that Jesus used. He called them the law. Now, of course, he did not have a, a, a book like this. There was no printing press like we have now. It might have been something on lambskin or goatskin, something like this. This is just a piece of plastic that I had tried to make look like an ancient manuscript for a decoration. You know, and, uh, they were usually rolled up, like the uh, documents found in the caves at Qumran. Now, if it was the temple or a place like that, then they would have a Torah, which is the first five books of the scriptures. And it would be about this size, like about two feet. This, this is a miniature. It's really like a toy for, you know, a religious family to give to their child. But the big one looks like this. It usually has a fancy cover. Let me see if I could get this up. This one, since it's a toy, it's not made very carefully. All right. I think they got it. Okay. So then it's like this. And believe it or not, um, they actually have Hebrew letters. Modern Hebrew. Modern Hebrew is different from ancient Paleo Hebrew, which was pictorial. Anyway, in, in most synagogues, they, they'll carry this around at certain services, maybe all the services sometimes, some congregations. And, you know, people will, I've seen people take, um, let's say this is their little prayer book. I would see them take their prayer book and kiss it, and then whoever was carrying this around the synagogue, they would touch their book that they just kissed to the Torah. Now, of course, it's more important to follow the teachings of the Torah and the scriptures and other writings, and not just to admire the actual physical Torah. Now, an answer I give to people when they quote the New Testament is, if it's something of importance, um, I tell them that's not the book that Jesus used. If it's not the writings. Now, there's nothing wrong with the New Testament. I don't think the translation is so accurate in many points because I don't think Jesus would disobey the law. So um, there's, there's many beautiful things in it. There's many beautiful things in, in the Quran also. And there's many beautiful things in my little diary. But I haven't been able to find in the New Testament, which I read for about 40 years over and over again, I haven't been able to find the expression, thus saith the Lord. So this is important. That I've only found in the Hebrew Bible. I know some Hebrew, but mostly I read it in English. And of course, there's different translations. And all these years, I have not found any commandment, any of the perpetual commandments that are still in force. I haven't found any that are harmful. I mean, loving your neighbor, uh, helping your neighbor's donkey who fell into a ditch get out. Uh, your enemies, don't you? Uh, eating non-scavenger foods, uh, being faithful to your spouse, teaching your children, putting a parapet on your roof to prevent anyone from falling off your roof if they're on the second floor. I mean, everything is beneficial. Even the most simple cosmetic thing like having a beard I've read over and over again that men with beards live longer because viruses and bacteria get stuck in the beard, and so they're not breathing in the viruses and bacteria. Now you might say, well, 
what about women? They don't have beards to protect them from viruses and bacteria. Well, in scripture, the woman's whole life is revolved around the home. So she's not out there in the world at the construction sites or on the farm, you know, the, dealing with the animals. So she's she has less exposure traditionally to all the toxins in the air. Anyway, um, let's let's talk about language. Uh, the original Hebrew is very different from modern Hebrew. Number one. There is no J in Hebrew. Every time you see a J in uh, the Hebrew scriptures, it's a Y. That's why people like Messianics, they won't say Jesus, they'll say Yeshua, which means salvation of the Almighty. And uh, names like Jonathan was a Y also is in the beginning, Jonathan. Um, other names, like in the New Testament, where they have uh, Matthew, it's really Mati Diahu. I mean, everything, I don't understand why people change the original, which is beautiful. Every letter in the Hebrew alphabet has a meaning. For instance, the first letter, Aleph, which is similar to our A in English, it means ox head, and there's a little picture of an ox head if you look up online Paleo Hebrew. And that means strength. Oxen, oxen were used for plowing. And the next letter, B, bet, means house. So A, B, Aleph, bet, Ab means father in Hebrew. And what is father? Just like the little pictures explain the strength of the house. That's what he's supposed to be. So I think it's very important in life to study, 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 and, and pray. And uh, the greatest uh, daily routine to me is, is going to bed, you know, very early, getting up very early, and uh, praying, stretching, uh, studying, and, and get set up with the right attitude for the day. Um, that's about it, and I love to answer questions, and keep studying, keep trying. Bad things that happen to you, as I've seen, s seem to be for the best. You learn something, you escape something you were getting stuck in, etc.